I've been using a V-Ray for a while now, and I wanted to take a look at one of my favorite features, which is the procedural sky system. So this project file will be available on Patreon. I'll just throw this on up with the, the height field. This height field is from the Lost Facility Devlog series. So I'm just going to include that in here. You can also grab it in that in a bunch of those project files as well. So either way, Let's go ahead and start to set this up. We need to, to do a couple of things, which is drop down a V-Ray sunlight. And then we also are going to need to come into this out context and drop down a V-Ray environment. So once we jump in there, we need to drop down a V-Ray sky texture. And this will allow us to see our clouds and everything in the background of our shot. And we need to come to the, the render wrap here and just drag our environment into that environment. And then we can load up our frame buffer. All right, so I've got our uh, V-Ray frame buffer loaded up here. So let's come to our light. It's very, very dark right now because we have the sunlight, which is basically just uh, like level with the, the the geometry here. So we need to kind of raise it up. So we can do that by just clicking and dragging the rotation handles. And by default, you see this is extremely bright and super blown out. So we need to come into our light settings and drop down the intensity quite a bit. We'll start with like, I don't know, 0 .0, 0 0.02, something like that. That gives us the ability to just kind of see our sun there. If I rotate and kind of see our sun, we can even drop it down more. Whoops, that was too much. You can play around with the size of the sun, which seems to be only like partially working. Um, and some of the, oh, no, nope, never mind, there it is. So if we take a look at our size as we increase this, it doesn't exactly work the way that I would expect it, which is to kind of like diffuse the light and everything. Um, but it does give you a bigger sun. And we can, I don't know, we'll set this to like 10 or whatever, just in case it does uh, affect things. You can play around with the different colors. So this color will change the color of the light, basically. We'll leave that as is for now. What I'm really interested in is these clouds down here. So let's actually raise this up even more, something like that. And we can come to this enable clouds and we can start to get some clouds going in our sky. So as I raise this multiplier, so we have our overall density, which if I raise this up, is not like how dense the clouds are, but like how, let me, let me rephrase that. It's not how dense each individual cloud is, it's how dense the cloud cover in general is. So you can see as I raise this up, we get more and more clouds. And as I lower it, we get less and less. I'm gonna leave that in the middle for now. And then we can also change this variety and that gives you a different type of cloud or increases like a different variety of clouds. I don't know how, how else to explain it. You get some variations in, in your clouds. So you can leave that at a value that you think looks good. We also have our seed. Obviously, you can play with that. And then we have this uh, Cirrus, which is, I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce it, Cirrus or Cyrus, I don't know. That is a type of cloud. So if I increase this, you see we get these kind of like striated clouds in the background, which is an interesting look. So you can mess around with that. You can also change the where the clouds are at. So you can kind of move them around and really art direct your shot, which is super cool. You can also change the height. So you can raise these way up in the air if you want. You can bring them super low. 
whatever works best for your scene. We'll just set that back to default. And then you can change the thickness of the cloud. So this is kind of like a, almost like a density multiplier type thing. So you can see that they're going, they're getting kind of bigger. They're raising them up. They're getting larger, like you'd see like large uh, storm clouds, or you can kind of flatten them out and get some weird looks. I don't know, whatever, whatever you find interesting. And then you can play around with this phase too, which is more like messing around with the um, the shadows. So if we click enable ground shadows, and let's go ahead and increase the density here, and let's find an offset that gives us some shadows there. So we get some shadows on our train here, which this is this is really really awesome in my opinion. This is one of the the best features of V-Ray is this cloud, at least for environment artists. It's the ability to to make these clouds and then also have the the shadows fall on your terrain. So now as I drag these around, you can see that that affects the way our shadows fall. So you can leave your clouds in the same spot, but get some different looks to your shadows and same with this setting as well. So pretty interesting there. You just gotta be careful because if you start to increase this multiplier up too much, these become like straight black, in which case you're gonna want to just add in uh, a secondary light, so like a, a dome light or something to get uh, the look that you're, that you're going for. Um, and you can obviously play around with all these different settings and get some, some different looks. You also have ozone here, which affects kind of how the light looks. So it's kind of hard to see, but the more ozone this has, the bluish grayish it gets, the more bluish it gets. And then as it goes lower, you have less and less of the, the ozone. And then turbi or turbidity is kind of like, um, uh, let's see what the tooltip says. Determines the amount of dust in the air and affects the color of the sun. Uh, produce a bluer sky with smaller values and yellow orange as you raise it up. So if you want to get like a more of like a Martian landscape or maybe like a hazy day, then you're going to get, you can use the turbidity to affect that a little bit. You can also change the sky model so we get some different looks with these as well. So uh, some of these you'll have to play around with the different settings. So you can get some overcast looks. I like, uh, I really like this one. I also really like uh, the this one, the PRG clear sky. Um, and actually right here you can start to see that we have the horizon. So you can offset the horizon using this slider. So as I drag that lower, it starts to disappear into the ground. So depending on the angle of your camera shot, you may need to lower that. And then you also have blend angle, which affects things as well. You can leave that as is. But that is kind of the gist of how you can set it up. You can also use geographic position, but uh, I'm not gonna mess with that. I just wanted to show off how you can enable clouds and start to, to mess with them. And they also have contrails if you wanna have you know, airplanes or whatever flying through your sky and you can do that but i really like the way that these clouds uh look and i think this is a a very good selling point for environment artists to use v ray i know it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other render engines but i do think that uh, this adds a lot of value along with some of the other features of v ray so you can take that for what you will uh, but I probably, I think I'm going to use this specifically so I can use these clouds in the Lost Facility project. That's part of why I wanted to cover this. So if you're interested in that series, make sure you jump over there and take a look at that Lost Facility project. Uh, but anyways, that's how you set up the sun and sky with clouds in V-Ray. Uh, hopefully this helped you out. If you didn't know how to do it, now you do. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Thank you.